So far we've seen how to locate elements in the DOM. Now we're going to see how to add event listeners to our elements using JavaScript. One of the most important concepts to understand in web development is events. Web browsers are inherently event-driven. The code that we write isn't constantly running while somebody's looking at our web page. Instead, each piece of code is assigned to a specific event, and when that event occurs, our code is executed. Events might be something like somebody clicking on a page, hitting a key, submitting a form, or it might be non-user initiated actions like when the page is loaded or when a timer has completed. The code in our script tags is immediately executed as they're reached by the parser, and it's at these top level blocks of code that we set up our other pieces of code to respond to various events. And this is what makes our page behave the way we want. Now one of the most common things we want to do is listen for an on-click event. So we have our page here, and I'm going to flip over to the code. I've created a script tag at the bottom of the page. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to create a very simple function where we're going to call click listener. And inside of this, it's just going to create an alert box that says I was clicked. This is just a very visible alert that we can use. So now we actually want to create an event that will trigger this click listener event. I don't want the alert to show when the page loads, but rather when I click the H1 tag. So this is going to be very easy for us to do in its simplest form. So we're just going to create a var called H1 so we can have our H1 variable. And we'll use our document .get element by ID. And our H1 has the ID of headline. And so all we need to do is assign to our h1 element to the onClick property. Now when we assign a function to this property, like our click listener, whenever this element is click, the associated function will be called. Now notice here I'm not adding parentheses because I'm setting the onClick to be the function, not the invocation of the function. If I were to put parentheses here, our function would be immediately executed and it would not set up as an event listener. So now anytime we click on our element with the ID of headline, we should get an alert saying I was clicked. So I'm just going to save this out and we will refresh. And so now if I click on the headline here, you can see we get an alert message that says I was clicked. Now if I click anywhere else on the page, which I'm doing right now, I don't get anything. But if I click on the H1, like right here, it says I was clicked. I notice since the H1 is a block level element, it actually takes up all the space across the page, not just what's in the hello world. So even if I click over here, we get the same message. Now using the on click on mouse over, on double click and other methods are a nice and straightforward way to set up event listeners, but they have a problem. We can't easily add two different click listeners to the same node because the second one would just overwrite the original one. Instead, we should attach event listeners to nodes in a way that multiple listeners can be attached. Now, the standard way of doing this is using the add event listener method, which will set up something like this. So I'm going to keep my same click listener function, and I'm still going to grab my h1 element like I have before. But instead of using the on click method, I'm going to use the add event listener function. So I'm just going to type add event listener. And to this, I pass the type of event I want to use. In this case, I'm going to do click. And notice this is not on click, but just normal click. We don't have to prepend on to this. And then we pass the function. So I'm just going to pass click listener. And of course, I'm not adding parentheses to the end of that. So if we save this out and we refresh and we click on hello world, we can see I was clicked. So the advantage of this is if we have a second function called click listener two, and we'll just change the message around here. We can now actually add multiple listeners to the same element. So I'm going to use the same h1 dot add event listener, and I'm just going to pass the second function. So what happens here is if I refresh, and I click, we see we get the I was clicked from our first listener. But then right after that, we get our second event listener. So using the add event listener allows us to add multiple listeners to the same method. Now there is a problem because Microsoft's way of doing this is actually a bit different. They use a method called attach event and when we pass it the event type it has to be prepended with on, so on click instead of click. So let's look at how we could set up this code. 
So I'm going to remove our click listener to code right here. And so now we need to assign our event listener based on which method we have available. So the first thing we're going to do is check h1 dot add event listener. And I'm just going to see if this property exists. If so, we know that add event listener is supported in this browser. And this will be pretty much all modern browsers except for Internet Explorer. So we can just set that up and we'll put the code in right here. And so now if we don't have add event listener, we can do else if h1 dot attach event. And if this method exists, like it will in Internet Explorer, we can do h1 dot attach event. And here we have to do on click instead of just click. And we can pass our click listener here. Now finally, if it's a really old browser, the dot assigning to the on click property, like we showed before, will almost always work. So if you want another fallback, we can do else h1 dot on click equals click listener. So now this has three cases for the W3C standard, for Internet Explorer, and for everything else. So if we do that and we refresh, we can see that we can now click our code. Now obviously, just for attaching an event listener, we have pretty much about 10 lines of code right here just to do a very simple event listener. So it makes sense for us to create a function to abstract this away from us. So I'm going to actually clear out all this code and let's paste in a function and see how this works. Now this function is much like our code before, it's just everything's abstracted away into arguments of the function. So we'll call bind and we'll pass an HTML element, the name of the event, and the callback function. So we do our normal check if there's add event listener. If so, we add the event listener to the event, in which case this might be like click or mouse over or another name, and we pass the function. Otherwise, we check for attach event, and here we have to prepend on because that's how the API works, and we pass the same function. And then otherwise, we assign to the on event property and pass the function. So now we can do something like this where we grab our h1 tag, and instead of doing all this code for each individual call, we just call bind h1, click, and pass in the function. In this case, I just did an inline function, which we can do because we don't need a named function to be passed into three different methods. Instead, we can just inline function here and not need a named function. So if we save it out and refresh, we can see we now get the clicked with exclamation points message. Up next, we'll be taking a more in-depth look into handling events in the DOM.